Hello, my name is Sandy Engelhardt. I would like to present our contribution to Bildverarbeitung für die Medizinkonferenz 2020. And the title of our contribution is Generative Adversarial Networks for Stereoscopic Hyperrealism in Surgical Training. This work was initially presented at MIKAI uh, 2019. You can see the official reference here, and it has been submitted as an abstract to the BVM conference. During my talk, I want to answer the question, how can we actually increase the realism of surgical training simulators? And my work mainly focuses on mitral valve repair. Mitral valve repair is a specific cardiac procedure, a specific procedure which is conducted in cardiac surgery in order to repair mitral valves. And these mitral valves are often pathological mitral valves, which means that, uh, for example, one of the leaflets would uh, flap back into the left atrium, so you would observe a mitral valve prolapse, for example, and this can be repaired by, um, this can be repaired by a cardiac surgeon. Um, unfortunately, such kind of surgeries are very complex and unfortunately also very experience-based. This means even in big hospitals, only two to three to four cardiac surgeons would conduct this kind of procedure on a regular basis in order to obtain enough experience in order to obtain or in order to achieve very good results. And the steps they can conduct range from implantation of a ring prosthesis, um, implantation of a neocorde or triangular vitellacute sections, etc. Here you see some more examples, some more intraoperative examples. You see that these um, mitral valves can be very diverse considering the tissue. Um, during the surgery, the surgeon would use different amounts of suture material, different retractors, sizes of um, ring prosthesis, etc. In the past we have been working on how to improve training facilities for cardiac surgeons in this field and we developed a patient specific simulator that enables the surgeon to conduct different kinds of procedures on these valves, ranging from analoplasty, ring insertion to neocorda insertion. Um, in order to produce these valves, we use 3D printing and we identified a water soluble material which is called PVA. Um, and this can be used to print such kind of molds that we automatically compute from a um, segmentation which was conducted on the 3D echo. And after injecting silicons in these molds, we place them into water and then we can basically release the valve from the mold. After producing several valves with this technique, we asked different cardiac surgeons, different experienced cardiac surgeons, how would you evaluate the realism of these valves and they evaluated the shape, the material, the stitching and cutting properties quite positively. However, what is not so realistic is of course the tissue appearance. Um, usually in an interpretive scene you would observe much more heterogeneous texture, specularities or blood. And in order to overcome these shortcomings, we introduce a concept called hyperrealism into the field. This concept uses information which is captured by the endoscope on our minimally invasive simulator, as shown here. Feed this video stream into a deep learning network called Generative Adversary Network. And this network learned previously how intraoperative scenes actually look like and is able to transform this image into a more realistic one. We coined this as a novel form of augmented reality where unrealistic parts of the images are actually 
transform to look more realistic. This is different from traditional augmented reality where a virtual overlay is superposed on a real scene. And when we look at the reality virtuality continuum, which was proposed by Paul Mikram in 1994, uh, we would place this novel concept hyperrealism somewhere between the real environment and augmented reality. So it's a little bit closer to the real environment according to our definition. Um, because there are still parts of the image which actually should not be transformed, such as um, the instruments, the sutures, the needles, the prosthesis. How do we train such kind of networks? Well, we rely on the now famous psychogun approach, which was proposed by Suidal and published at ICCV 2017. We use interoperative endoscopic sequences and endoscopic training sequences from our phantoms and we feed this into a generative adversarial network. Doing that we obtain, we obtain already quite nice results. So it's quite difficult to actually identify the faked examples here in this scenario. Um, so these are the fake examples, all the other images are real images. In image-to-image -image synthesis, this usually learns a mapping G, X to Y, such that the distribution of images from GX is undistinguishable from the distribution Y. However, that does not necessarily force the generated images to be consistent and without artifacts. And in the endoscopic domain, this can affect the temporal consistency, the depth information, and the stereo consistency. And this ultimately impairs surgical mission. So this is definitely a problem we try to address in our work so far. If we apply the original cycle gun to a video stream, we would observe a lot of flickering, as can be seen here on the left-hand side. Therefore, we came up with a novel approach um, that reduces this inconsistency and more details on this approach can be found in this publication. Here are some other examples um, that can be produced with the temp cycle gun approach. What you see here, and this is a, a really, I, I would say, funny side effect. The network learns that these white sutures turn red during the surgery because of blood and it now transforms this also into red basically on the simulator. Also what, um, what is nice um, is that we have a very realistic appearance of um, the, the speckles, of the specularities and of the interoperative of the tissue basically. However, when we look at our training scenarios, here are some images from our training lab, we see that some of the surgeons actually use, prefer to use a stereo endoscope in order to get some training on this. And unfortunately, the approach we had so far did not address this. And this is the contribution for our BBM uh, paper. So for the task of the stereo pair generation, the forward generator of the original cycle gun approach tended to create unrealistic colors and artifacts in the faked interoperative scenes. And to improve on this, we introduce a novel concept cross domain conditioned guns. And this novel approach is not so different from the original gun approach, actually. So the original gun approach takes one input, feeds this into a generator network, and generates a transformed image use a second network to transform this image back into the original domain and then computes the L1 norm over these images. What we do in our approach, we use a second input from the target domain, use this um, as an input to the generator and produce one image and then we add another image from the target domain and do the same. And the interesting thing here is that um, after transformation of the left image, we use this image and feed this into the, or we use this as an additional 
image to guide the transformation in the right image synthesis. And this enables us to get better results here in the transformation. Well, of course, we evaluated our approach and we, therefore we acquired a lot of data from the simulator, approximately 240,000 stereo pair frames. And from that we sampled 1,400 stereo pairs. And also we have been using um, data from three mitral valve repair surgeries where approximately 620,000 stereo pairs at 25 to 60 frames per second were captured. And from these image streams, we extracted 1,200 stereo pairs. In terms of data preprocessing, data augmentation, we used random crop, rescaling to uh, 256 times 512. Furthermore, we applied random flipping and intensity rescaling. We used the Adam Solver, batch size 1, learning rate of 0 0.001, um, and we trained for 80 epochs. 40 epochs on the mono data and 40 epochs on the stereo data. More um, information on that can be found in the paper. For evaluation purposes, we mainly evaluated perceptual factors and we tried to compare our method to the baseline method, which is a cycle gun method. We extracted 15 random samples from each test set when each sample was shown in an interlaced format on the 3D monitor to three surgeons and three non-experts. We've asked different questions uh, considering death, realness and reliability. For example, are you able to perceive death? How real appear these scenes? And then we use also some auxiliary question in order to evaluate the reliability. We evaluated that because um, we wanted to see whether our approach um, adds something to the scene or takes something significant away from the scene. And in order to evaluate that, we asked the question, what kind of pathology do you see? Uh, can you identify the surgical instruments? Which phase of mitral valve repair is shown? Mm, some qualitative results here. So you see an example of a stereo pair on the left hand side and you see the transformation, cycle gun transformation and the cross domain conditional guns um, here at the bottom of the slide. What you can see nicely is that the colors in our approach are more um, realistic and furthermore also the back transformation is more consistent in our approach. Results from our user study suggest that in 84 of 90 instances of our proposed method, um, our method was preferred or rated equal to the baseline. And you can see this here in the diagram. So here you have all the test samples we've shown to the surgeons and to the uh, non-experts. And you see the rating of our results as a symbol and the different to the baseline method indicated as an error. Considering the reliability, we had also, we basically had no complaints or we um, could say that the transformation was quite reliable in our approaches. Um, by saying that, I thank you for your attention. I thank the team who contributed to this work.